Hello, everyone, everybody. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. I'm very happy to welcome you to this third and last day of Smooth Conference Brazil 2022. Uh, it's a pleasure for me to actually open this, this day, but uh, it, uh, and also to welcome my colleague and friend, Bianca Freire Medeiros, who is going to moderate this uh, keynote. And why am I saying this? Uh, the only unfortunate news of today in the morning is that Ramiro Segura, who, who is the, the, the keynote speaker, he will not be able to join us today due to, um, yeah, the, he, 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 he have the, has had a fever and this fever has not, uh, he has not been able to recover uh, timely for this, for this conference, but he sent us his text uh, and so I will read it. Uh, we will do everything as it as it was planned, except for the fact that unfortunately well, Hamido will not be here. But the good thing is that we can make use of technology uh, for for our interests. So the idea is to uh, have to send Hamido feedback on uh, his uh, paper. So I will. Uh, uh, Bianca is going to present him. I, uh, to introduce and uh, some information about him. I'm going to read the text, the paper, and then Bianca is going to moderate the discussion that will follow. So uh, Bianca, I hand over to you for you to please uh, uh, tell some, some words about Ramiro. Hey, everybody. It's so nice to be here. It's the final day of this amazing event. Uh, Freya is, and, and her team are to be congratulated. And, and it's, an, it's an amazing job and it's a very complex uh, setting with this transnational um, event. And unfortunately, yeah, Ramiro Segura is not with us, he's ill, but um, I'll say some words about him. He's, he's an anthropologist um, and from the Universidad Nacional de La Plata. He holds a PhD in social sciences from the Universidad Nacional de General Sarmiento and was a postdoctoral researcher at the Freie University in Berlin. He's a researcher of the Consejo Nacional de Investigaciones Científicas y Técnicas de CONISAT uh, at the Instituto de Altos Estudios Sociales, Universidad Nacional de San Martín, where he's a professor of urban anthropology. His research focuses on the field of urban studies on which he has given courses, seminars, and he has actually uh, uh, published extensively. Um, so he has, in this field, he has conducted research on, on cultural heritage, urban insecurity, social spatial segregation, um, daily mobility, and social inequalities in the urban space. Um, well, he has articles published in Cuadernos de Antropología Social, um, Periferia, um, what else? Sociedad de Cultura, a Brazilian um, um, journal, Latin American Perspectives and Latin American and Caribbean Ethnic Studies from the US. Uh, so, and he has his latest book, uh, it's titled Vivir Afuera, Antropología de la Experiencia Urbana, which has a lot to do with what we're, we're going to discuss this morning. So, Fraya. <laughs> Thanks, uh, Bianca, for this presentation. <clears throat> so I'm, I'm starting uh, to read. I will start to read now. Hello, everybody. It's a pleasure to be here today. I would like to thank the Global Center of Spatial Methods for Urban Sustainability for the invitation to participate in this conference, the Smooth Conference Brazil 2022. But I would also like to thank especially Friar Fraser for the invitation and Bianca Freire Medeiros for the moderation. My aim today is to share some reflections with you about the methodological strategies and tools that Latin American research have deployed to analyze the production and reproduction of urban space in, the, in everyday life. There are many ways to analyze the urban space and the urban processes. Because my, of my interest in the quotidian and the everyday, I will focus on methods that try to observe, to register, and to understand the daily practices 
in the urban space. I'll organize my presentation in four sections. And so I please ask Anna or, or Simone to forward uh, uh, Hamido's presentation. The next slide, please, yes. Four sections, dwelling and building, where I briefly present my theoretical perspective on urban space, popular urbanization, a section in which I want to highlight the relevance and the persistence of the popular housing issue in the agenda of Latin American urban studies, Third uh, section, alternative to the, as it were, village temptation, where I reflect on the limits of the studies on bounded and located groups in the analysis of urban life. And fourth section, cha challenging the panoramic point of view, a, a, a section in which I reflect on the productivity of the studies focused on daily practice in destabilized, de sorry, in destabilized, uh, it, sorry, in destabilizing the dominant images of the city. So the first section, please. Uh, Anna, uh, the first, yeah, thanks. Building and Dwelling is the title of one of the latest books by Richard Sennett, published in 2018. In this book, Sennett claims for an analytical perspective that focuses on the relations between la ville, né, the ville, la ville, and Le, the city, that is, the relationship between the building space and the experienced space. For me, the concept of urban space includes these both these dimensions and its complex relations. The challenge for the social for social research is to explore the complex and productive relationship between socially constructed space and the social practices of inhabiting and producing such space. As you probably already realized, in this talk, I changed the order of the verbs dwelling and building instead of building and dwelling, because both ontological and uh, both, uh, both uh, for ontological and methodological reasons. On the one hand, according to Ingold, to Tim Ingold, while building is a transitive verb, dwelling is an intransitive one. It is not merely the occupation of structures already built, but also the way inhabitants produce their own lives. It is an open and unfinished process of signification and use of the environment done in time through, uh, I quote, a set of practices and representations that allow the subject to be placed within a spatial temporal order and at the same time to establish it. So I'm, I'm a quote, he is quoting uh, Duhau, Emilia Duhau and uh, uh, Angela Hilia uh, from 2008. And he translated it, it's his translation. On the other hand, the methodological point of departure of my explanation will be the everyday practices of urban dwellers or paraphrasing, paraphrasing uh, Michel Certeau, the space as practiced place. Likewise, I believe that the centrality of dwelling has another reason in the case of Latin American cities, that is, the relevance of dwellers in the production of the city itself. And hence, I uh, come to the second session, section of this. Yes, thank, thanks. In fact, one of the salient traits uh, of Latin American cities since the middle of the, the mid 20th century has been the housing and the neighborhood self constructions. As we know, a significant proportion of the people in Latin America have to dwell uh, and then they have, sorry, they, they first dwell and then they build. As Michel, Michel Agier pointed out about the making of the city process in Latin America, the first movement has been a space occupation and then the negotiation to be there and to build a life in the city. Popular urbanization is only a, den a denomination. We, uh, we use the popular urbanization. It's a denomination to these dynamics that have characterized Latin American urbanism and have, has been one of the main concerns in the social sciences in the region during at least half a century. 
The Latin American vertiginous urbanization processes arising from the massive internal migration from rural to urban areas were a privileged setting for the modern social side. The, 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 exactly this urbanization processes, this vertiginous urbanization processes that characterize Latin American cities, the, exactly these uh, this has been the privileged setting for the onset of the modern social sciences in the region. We can say, in fact, that rather than the moment of constitution of urban sociology of, or of urban anthropology, the study of popular urbanization during the 1960s and 1970s has been a, the, the field where our disciplines have been created in its modern forms. In some urban space, as a prism of social analysis is lies an, uh, uh, at the basis of what we can term sociology and anthropology and urban sociology and urban anthropology in Latin America. That's that's Ramiro's uh, statement. Following these transformations, an interdisciplinary uh, network of regional scope was consolidated in the mid 20th century. And this uh, network focused on the so-called informal and marginal, in inverted commas, neighborhoods that grew up during these dec decades in the major Latin American cities. Colon colonias in Mexico and Me in Mexico, barriadas in, in Lima, poblaciones in Santiago, favelas in Rio, periferias in Sao Paulo, vías miseria in Buenos Aires. During those years, there were at least four approaches to marginality in Latin America. First, the theory, and now he quotes Svampa 2016. First, the theory of modernization with references such as uh, Gino Germani, the Italian sociologist residing in Argentina, for whom marginality was a transitory phenomenon and thus social and urban integration were only a matter of time. A second strand, the culturalist approaches that following Lewis ideas, Oscar Lewis ideas, considered that poverty was rooted in the social, cultural, and psychological features of the marginal population. A third strand was the Marxist-inspired economic, where the, the, the Marxist-inspired economic approaches that shifted the gaze from marginal people to marginality understanding uh, understood as marginal mass in inverted commas. And uh, Ramiro refers to Nun, uh, 1969, and also to Cardoso, Fernando Henrique Cardoso, uh, uh, with his uh, theory, dependence theory, 1970, or the so-called marginal pole, and then uh, referring to Aníbal Quijano in 1972. Uh, all of these as a structural uh, marginality, as a structural and relational position of a sector of the population in Latin American societies with a disadvantage insertion in the labor market. Finally, the social spatial approaches ranging from the modernizing, uh, modernizing illusions of planning that, that deposited an automatic solution to marginality in urban renewal to critical studies, such as the Brazilian sociologist Lucio Kovaric, who developed the concept of urban spoliation, which showed the relevance of spatial organization in the persistence of marginality. Within the larger scene, the Chicago school research was a starting point for significant Latin American ethnographies of popular neighborhoods. By moving away from the strong culturalism of Oscar Liu's proposal and assuming the structural character of urban marginal marginality in uh, Latin America, many ethnographies and ethnographs no, uh, described and analyzed the daily practices of urban sectors. For example, the investigation conducted by the Peruvian anthropologist Jose Matos Mar in 1966 in Lima. This is, per, uh, in, in, uh, is paradigmatic of the displacement from the idea of barriada as a problem on which it is necessary to intervene with modern centralized urban planning tools to the idea of barriada as a solution later popularized by the English architect John Turner by means of extolling the virtues of popular self-construction and the vernacular architecture. 
uh, Ramiro cons uh, 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 refers here to Balland 2016. Also, the ethnography in a Mexican popular neighborhood by Larissa Lomlitz in 1975 highlighted reciprocal exchange networks between neighbors and relatives to alleviate economic instability and the lack of state security mechanisms. Finally, the ethnographies carried out by Ruth Cardoso in 1983, Eunice Durham in 1973, and Teresa Caldeira in uh, 1984 in Brazil opened a fruitful field of exploration of the, about the political and cultural dynamics of the urban periphery in Sao Paulo. The 1973 coup d'etat in Chile a country in which the most ambitious regional planning experience was being carried out and in which the, the settlers movement, as it were, played a relevant role in the government of Salvador Allende, began the stage of military dictatorships that led to the establishment of neoliberalism in the region. And this, exactly this fact in Chile, marks the end of the cycle of regional reflection on the Latin American city. In this sense, I, Ramiro, believe that it is relevant to reconstruct a long lasting tradition that today is crossed by discontinuities and forgetfulness of blocking the constitution of a field of urban social studies in the region. In any case, beyond the discontinuities and the forgetfulness, there has been a persistent concern for the processes of urban uh, popular urbanization and for the daily life of the urban poor that relates to the research of the 1960s and 1970s 70s, as the case of contemporary debates on informality in inverted commas and peripheral urbanization uh, in inverted commas too in the global south cities. According to Teresa Caldera, this type of urbanization has the following characteristics, a distinct one, a distinctive form of agency in which the inhabitants are agents of urbanization. Second, a transversal link with the official logics in search of solving problems of ownership and regularization of land tenure. Three, new forms of political actions that mobilize city demands, citizen demands and expectations. And fourth, the creation of highly heterogeneous and unequal cities. And hence, we arrive at the third section. Please, uh, slide please. Thanks. In the urban ethnography, there has been a predominance of the theoretical and methodological tools developed by the Chicago School, especially in, in the framework of the so-called community studies, which focused on the in-depth analysis uh, of spatially and or, and or culturally bounded groups. In fact, at least until the 1980s, the predominant approach in urban anthropology consisted in an attempt to define universes different from those of the researcher, imagined as autonomously based and on criteria such as co-residence, Migra migratory origin, migration origin, ethnicity, race, sphere of activity. And the task was to understand their culture. It was in short, a true ethnolization, ethno no, sorry, ethnologization of urban life, as uh, La Predel uh, uh, puts it, or a tribalization of cities as Prato and Pardo in 2013 uh, uh, coined, in addition to the persistence of exoticism, Herzfeld 1987, the peculiarity of this city of anthropologists, as Michel La Pradel called it, is that in a truly paradoxical way, the city disappears as an object of study. Instead, Dwelling, if we focus on dwelling, dwelling implies movement in space time. I quote, lives are led not inside the places, but through, around, to and from them, from and to places elsewhere. This was something, uh, 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 end quote, uh, and Hamido quotes Tim Ingold. 
If life occurs along the paths leading from place to place, how to avoid the, as uh, José Guilherme Magnani, a Brazilian anthropologist, coined it, how to avoid the so-called village temptation and to develop research with an urban perspective, um, to, to quote uh, Peixoto and Adrian Gorelick in 2016. In this direction, there have been two complementary innovations. First of all, on the one hand, there has been a profound red redefinition of the concept of place, rather than an isolated and an autonomous location, regardless of its scale, a place is a meeting point, uh, rec uh, recalling uh, Doran Massey in 1991, between diverse processes and agents involved in the, uh, I quote, production of locality, and then uh, Ramiro uh, uh, recalls Apadurai, Aguna Apadurai in 2013. And it, uh, place acquires its singularity by the mode of connection with the rest of the places in a changing geometry of power. The redefinition of place implied uh, a methodological uh, innovation. Faced with this panorama, urban ethnographies paying attention both to the relationships between macro and micro social processes and to the interconnections and interweavings between flows and diverse scales that are articulated in urban space and also model it, exactly this was the uh, uh, methodological innovation. A second uh, innovation, on the other hand, mobile ethnography was also applied to understand urban dynamics within cities. Before the consolidation of a new mobility paradigm, and uh, he quotes Scheller uh, and Uri in 2006, we can identify relevant methodological innovation in Latin American urban studies. The Brazilian anthropologist José Guilherme Magnani in 2002 uh, developed a, a strategy of following cultural practices. Indeed, he did it before, but he, uh, uh, Ramiro is quoting a study from 2002, a, a text from 2002, in which, uh, I quote, uh, the, the idea is to follow cultural practices in urban space. Magnani did so by mapping the material and social supports that converge in the formation of, as he called them, urban circuits, such as working class people's leisure practices in 1984, uh, a book of 1984, which is actually, uh, the, the photo is shown here, is, is depicted here on the slide, um, and also youth cultural practices in 2005 in Sao Paulo, which uh, and actually, uh, a focus on um, these circuits, which are not limited to urban residential spaces. For its part, the city of travelers, La Ciudad de los Viajeros, a seminal collective work directed by Nestor Garcia Canclini, the anthropologist, the Mexican anthropologist, and this is the other photo that appears here, the other uh, book cover, uh, ex uh, explored the urban imaginaries of Mexico City. For this, uh, uh, Canclini and his team built a corpus with historical and current photography, presenting these images to discuss in focus groups with different classes of daily travelers. The research showed the different images of the city constructed in these jo daily journeys, as well as the negotiation with others in urban space. And hence, we arrive at the fourth and last section uh, of this um, keynote. Please, uh, slide please, thanks. While the dominant representations of the city have a panoramic or zenith point of view, the investigation of everyday spatial practices challenges these points of view. These kinds of images are recurrent to show the fragmentation and inequality of Latin American cities. At the end of the 20th century and the beginning of the 21st century, urban research in Latin America tended to reproduce the theoretical perspectives that directly related globalization, economic restructuring, and urban fragmentation. However, recent research has shown dimensions and experiences that escape these representations. And now, I, next slide, please. Saravi's work from, uh, next slide, please. 
uh, Anna? Yeah, thanks. Uh, Saravi's work in Mexico City suggests that fragmentation refers not only to disconnection, but also to forms of connectivity and union. It is then not only about isolation and separation, but also about the way in which daily interactions take place. Relationships that are generally based on differentiated and unequal integrations that usually reinforce social hierarchies are uh, important too. In this sense, Ethnographies such as the ones carry, the one carried out by El Elgezabal in the towers of Buenos Aires, buildings of the upper classes or for the upper classes with private security, with common spaces and with various amenities, show that on the contrary to what the notion of enclave entails, there is no coincidence between material and social borders. In the everyday life of the towers, these borders are blurred labile and porous, and therefore they must be continually, continuously marked, pointed out, reinforced in an enclave work, uh, in inverted commas, that strives to separate the inside from the outside of the towers. On the other hand, Paola Giron in, in Mancilla from the mobility paradigm highlighted that the usual users of fragmentation, the fragmentation concept, overlook three dimensions in tempor its temporality, representing it as a synchronous event, the interaction between the fragments regarding them as isolated, and uh, th th third, the inhabitants' space time experience, which is absent in many studies. Inequalities should not be considered in terms of fixed enclaves, but also in relation to mobile gradients, that is, to the differential possibilities of moving and accessing the benefits and opportunities present in the urban environment. Therefore, the proliferation of barriers, the establishment of discontinuities, and the production of distances that are typical of uh, in inverted commas, fragmentary urbanism, undoubtedly have significant impacts and in in differentials according to class, to gender, to ethnicity and age, among other dimensions, upon access to activities, peoples and places. However, through mobility practices and not without effort, the inhabitants seek to overcome these barriers. And as the author, authors beautifully write, they mend a fragmented urban fabric. By placing the focus on the subject space-time practices and their meanings, the study of mobility makes it possible to build, as Mignani uh, emphasizes, an intermediate plane uh, to analyze the city. Neither the a panoramic map of the city, nor the individual fixed at a point in the city, but rather people crossing the thicket of the city as Hiron and Mancilla uh, point, uh, uh, propose, taking tours, making circuits together, encountering and sometimes overcoming obstacles, establishing relationships, producing and reproducing differences, as Ramiro has uh, pointed out in a text of 2018. On the other hand, exploration with mental maps has been productive in capturing other points of view and now I, uh, yes, uh, uh, of the city, about the city. Uh, and I think we can take the next slide, please. Thanks. On the other hand, exploration with mental maps has been productive in capturing other points of view about the city and urban experience. Let's compare these images, product, which are products of my own research, Ramiro's own research. In the center of the slide, uh, you can see the foundational map of the city of La Plata, Argentina, elaborated at the end of the 19th century. On both sides of the slide, there are drawings made by inhabitants of poor neighborhoods on the outskirts who, according to their own words, live outside, ne, in inverted commas, the city. On the, in one of them, through the line, the author seeks to represent his daily movements between the peripheral neighborhood in which he lives and the symbolic and geographical center of the founding layout of the city to which he travels daily. For this, he draws a panoramic visual image 
shared by many inhabitants of the city, the square that represents the foundational layout with the position that he and his neighbors or in his neighborhood, sorry, occupy with respect to the center. And, and, and there, from there he draws the itinerary that he must follow to connect both points. The line, in inverted commas, condenses the multiplicity of practices, living, walking, writing, drawing, etc., involved in living, understood as the tracing of lines that intertwine, separate, come together, etc., along paths that they carry from one place to another. And on the other, in the other uh, drawing that appears here on the slide, the, uh, the, sorry, 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 yeah, a migrant from Bolivia synthesizes parts of her experience in the city, the place from where she looks at the city. I quote, first the 90, né? end quote, she said, the street where she lives. Certain urban landmarks shared by a multiplicity of uh, inhabitants, such as the cathedral and the municipality, the different places from where she circulates or has circulated in the past, the hospital, the railway station, and the distances between her home and these places. But fundamentally, what I want to emphasize is that in this image, the point of view that modern cartography uh, expelled reappears. She has drawn the cities for us as she sees it from her place of residence. She didn't, didn't make a square and then located her neighborhood in relation to it, accepting the geometric and totalizing perspective of the modern discourse. But she first drew her position and from there she looks at the city and represents it as it is seen in, 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 uh, in inverted commas from the point of view you look at it. This is a radical destabilization of the linear perspective due to the emergence of the point of view in the center of the map, production of a discrepant uh, cartography, as Camilo quoted it or put it, uh, developed it in a, in a text by, uh, of 2015. This discrepant cartography shows another city in a certainly convergent movement with the experiences of counter-mapping developed in recent decades by artists and activists. In sun, uh, Camilo is pointing out that uh, in Latin America, we have a methodology sensitive to the urban experience of the inhabitants. And this methodology allows for the emergence of other points of view about the city. Thanks. And this is now the last slide. Thanks. Thanks, Ramiro. <laughs> now I hand over to Bianca. Thank you, Fraya. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Ramiro, for this uh, uh, extremely inspiring piece. Uh, Ramiro is, is uh, I, I strongly recommend uh, reading his, his work. He's a very talented ethnographer. It's a shame that he's not here today. Um, we should stress again that he's ill and uh, that's why he, he couldn't join us. Uh, and he was kind enough to, to send the, the, the piece that Freya just read. Um, and what we thought about was to open the floor and whoever wants to either to uh, put some comments questions <laughs> wouldn't help much because he's not here to answer them but uh, I'm sure he'll he'll be happy to uh, receive your comments and I think we could just have a, a, a conversation among us um, perhaps sharing your impressions and how this resonate with your own research uh, I can say some words on how this uh, um, how I I I, what the implications, what, what Ramir is saying has, uh, have on my own work. And we have many, many points of, of, uh, yeah, we, we do dialogue a lot. He has been, we've, we've done things, um, to, uh, together before and I'm especially, um, 
I would say I'm especially inspired by this whole discussion about breaking up with this uh, conception of the the territory that, that he's he's calling the the um, what is the expression he uses about the the village the 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 t village yeah. temptation village temptation yes, the village temptation yeah and uh, tentação da aldeia né yeah. and uh, and I think this is using the the this perspective the mobility lenses it does help a lot. And uh, we've been discussing this and how this implicates not only a new understanding of what the territory means and what the city means, but the ways to approach it methodologically. And this is something that uh, concerns us all in this event. Um, and I think the only <laughs> provocation I would send to to Ramiro because he's talking a, a lot about um, bodies and things in movement, uh, but I don't see as much um, images, ideas, and signs uh, included on his perspective. Uh, and this is something that I, I, I think would be nice for us to discuss. And because I think this is a, a different level of of this challenges us in a different in, in different ways, how we can um, put all this bring all of this together when we are talking about what the city means and and especially when and I think Ramiro is totally um, right when he says that right that we need to break down with this. Um, idea that we either talk about the the micro scale or we talk about uh, about the, the the micro or the macro scale right as if it were two separate entities we know that in in the real world this is totally connected into wine especially when we are talking about the go, go, uh, globalization and, and the present time right so uh, but saying this, acknowledging this in an intellectual level is different from actually working this out while we are doing our own researches. So perhaps now it would be nice to have people uh, sharing their own experiences. And I think, I, I, I think now I'm sure Freya has things to say about this and on her own research. And it's so it's it's about um, connecting global, the global and the local, but also uh, connecting different scales of time also, right? So uh, do you want to share some 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 impressions, Fred? Yeah, and uh, everybody thanks. else, please. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I thanks, Bianca. Uh, yeah, I, I I was also very. It was very nice because when I when I talked to when I when I invited Ramiro, I told him that it would be really, really nice to have a kind of, to offer this global public or, or global audience of the conference uh, uh, um, an overview about the debates. And I think what I'm very happy about uh, and really thank Ramiro a lot is that he really managed to give to give us an overview, to give you all, I hope so, né? an overview about the, the main uh, the main concerns of this of this uh, way of addressing the production of urban space from the everyday life point of view, which is very, you, it's really obviously uh, so. Uh, urban anthropology in in Latin America does it very strongly, but we know that Bianca, both of us are. Uh, work exactly in, in this area. We we uh, uh, we tra there's a tra uh, uh, a mob mobility between anthropology and sociology. It, it is it seems impossible in Latin America to be a sociologist without di uh, even if you work in the city. I uh, say even if you work in the city because uh, from the for example northern glo global north point of view, one could have the impression oh. Let's do urban sociology. We are in the city. City is very urban, very modern. So we don't need to have a kind of anthropological uh, uh, sensitiveness, sensitiveness. But what we learn here in Latin America né, is that uh, you, you, I always uh, recall José de Souza Martins, this uh, wonderful 
sociologist and a colleague of us at the Department of Sociology who's, who used to say, if you don't, uh, if you don't understand our uh, Latin America anthropologically, you will not understand it in sociological terms either. So it's so strongly, um, both, both areas are very necessary and that's why this dialogue is so strong. And I think what Ramiro's text shows us first is really this this importance of this, and even if you even if you work in cities, which apparently, uh, uh, from the point of view of this uh, mainstream uh, image of the city that that comes that stems from urban from the history of urban sociology of the global north, even if you work uh, on the city and in the city, you have to be. Uh, an anthropologist too. Né? So I think this is, and obviously this brings né, with it all of these uh, uh, methodological concerns that are the temptation, the village temptation has to do with the, the, that then, then anthropologists have their problems. Then this is the point of view of Ramiro too, because he is an anthropologist. So he says, look, let's let's recall uh, uh, Guilher José Guilherme Magnani, who was an anthropologist, and who say, my God, how how may anthropologists work in cities if they are used to the village? Né? And then this temptation village. So uh, it's very interesting, in my opinion, this, this text, uh, it shows how uh, I'm very happy that that uh, Hamira was very uh, talented in actually, I hope, uh, conveying to uh, the world uh, who is present in this conference how we this complexity we have to address uh, nah? and uh, the way we've done it and uh, but what I uh, I will also leave a provocation to Hamido Hamido what I'm what I uh, what I uh, was I'm missing nah? I don't know how uh, if it has to do obviously it has to do with my research not only with my but but this tradition that is very strong in Brazil too. Uh, in, in Brazilian sociology uh, is the, the role of, of time, né? Of, of, of historical time. So this past, né? This, because this, uh, this popular urbanization, it has to do the barriadas and so on and so on. They have to do with, uh, obviously they are about social inequality, but the social inequality has a history in Latin America. Né? Uh, we, we should not uh, forget, and it's, it's always important to remember, né? Uh, mainly for people who are not from Latin America, that, for example, the favelas in Brazil, they emerged, né? they are uh, uh, ama amazingly uh, timely linked to the end of slavery in Brazil, because the, the abolition of slavery in Brazil was uh, a... Was, uh, was a passport to just uh, leave these slaves uh, for their own. They had to do it. They have to had to to see how they would get by, and there was no uh, no uh, what do you say no no. Uh, um, my, Bianca, help me. But no support from the state. That's what you mean. No support from the state. There was no 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 payment of anything. They didn't get anything. They were just look. Uh, now you are free. Yeah. Now you are free and do what you want, do what you can, do what you. So and uh, and it's not not. Uh, uh, and good uh, luck. Yeah. Yeah. Good luck. Yeah. If 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 <laughs> no, because there were many many people who stayed, uh, so, mm -hmm. who kept on being slaves. But but uh, and then it, there's no uh, no uh, coincidence that the 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 hills of Rio de Janeiro, no, which was the capital of the of the mm -hmm. empire, and then the uh, of, uh, one year later the the republic became the privileged spaces, which were actually it was more. Mm -hmm. We would not say rural, but they were not uh, they were not uh, occupied. Né? Mm -hmm. But these spaces became occupied by né? Mm -hmm. former slaves. Né? So I think what I with uh, uh, my provocation to Hamiro would be né? to really um, and I, uh, this is and I think it's it's not only because uh, there is a there, there uh, what I want to stress is there is a tradition. It's not only. I've been working on that, but there is a tradition further. If you consider Floresta Fernandes, if you consider uh, even, for example, who, Eunice Durham and so on, the first, the study of 1973, they are very conscious of the historical process and they include history and the temporalities, the different temporalities of, of historical processes into the, the 
ethnographic uh, uh, approaches of the presence. But so now I think um, Freya Marcelo Neri just shared with us a very good point, and he says here, uh, the interface of re relation relationality methods with the issue of inequality in Latin America leads to the point. What is the dynamics of inequality in complex contexts and how to understand it? And I think this is the million, the one million dollar question. And uh, and thank you, Marcelo. And uh, uh, and I think that's that's. Uh, something that, uh, uh, well, I've been trying to, to answer it myself. And, uh, and I think that's something that Ramiro points out here. And, and uh, I think it needs to be, you know, um, we, we, it's, it's a good thing that we incorporated it. This idea that, and, and what Freya just said, that talking about inequality or talking about segregation is not the same as talking about isolation at all. Right, and that's the lesson we've been learning from from the favelas, from the barriadas, from the bicha This is these are places that these are territories that are extremely well connected in in various ways, right? And this doesn't mean there there is no there is no of course there is socioeconomic inequality, right? But when perhaps the what we need to think about is more in terms of how social economic inequalities. Um, are intertwined with social, social spatial inequalities, right? And how how this is um, how this has these interconnections. They do have a long lasting effect. They've they've been with us uh, uh, since the the foundations of our cities in Latin America, especially from from what we call the modern times. Uh, and they still, um, in a way define or or um put the it, they are the main challenges of uh, of how to make more i think our our city is more just more just and 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 uh less inequality and less inequality in, in terms of having a city that is more accessible in terms of its opportunities and and services and infrastructure and so on to all of us um and saying this, we need to, to remember that, uh, of course, when we are talking about the city, we are talking about its materialities, but not, not only that. And yeah. we're, when we are talking about space, we are not only talking about material space, right? We are also talking about all these connections that are that path, pass through um, signs and, and communications and, and uh, all and how important the importance that the, we have on uh, the present time when mm -hmm. we talk about uh, um, all these issues of inequality we are also talk, talking about more inclusiveness in terms of of uh, access to to internet and 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 all this uh, what we call we we, we, we call uh, network capital right Mm. I don't know if Marcelo wants to, to yeah. add something else. I don't know. Marcelo, do you want to 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 appear? Hi, I'm sorry. I have uh, some uh, technical problems. So uh, that's my point. Uh, I try to study uh, São Paulo city and that's dynamics, spatial temporal dynamics. And this is the point, uh, how <laughs> uh, I have my ideas. So um, I want to listen to uh, you in this moment. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, uh, <clears throat> now, I, I would add to what uh, Bianca said and also to what you said, uh, 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 Marcelo. I think the, this, in order to disentangle this dynamics of inequality, at least to, to my part, I've been working a lot on this, on these different temporalities uh, in space and the different spatialities too. So uh, I think we have the, the uh, and if we consider, for example, Ham what Ramiro's paper here, né, what he suggests is really the, the point of view of the, of, of, of the urbanite in, in the city, né? the mobility uh, uh, dynamics né? of the urbanite. So I think there are, uh, I, obviously, the problem is how do you uh, translate this kind of uh, 
temporal spatial uh, um, point of view into methods yes and mainly i i and i knowing your work i know you marcelo now you, you work a lot in, in in quantitative terms so i think you have a uh uh there is a uh and now you have a, a complementary problem because how to, how do you translate all of this into into measurement into numbers and into no, a spatialization uh geo geo referenced uh referenced uh um uh, geo sorry uh, specialization but i think uh, the the and i think what bianca also said now that she was uh, talking about these spa social spatial uh inequalities i think uh, what and i and considering this conference i think this is also what we that's why space and time these are uh, um variables that have been present here all during all these three days huh? and uh, even in Hamido when he says his space time uh, mobility because you cannot understand uh, Ivanka works on that you cannot uh, understand mobility unless you think it in uh, temporal spatial and also temporal terms so I think uh, the I I would guess that this is a, a clue for for reaching for answering your question obviously yeah but uh, obviously this isn't a no it's the the 20 million dollar question as <laughs> Bianca put it, but there are possibilities of addressing it in, in, in these terms now, I think. But what I would like just to add to uh, what also Bianca said and uh, our to our discussion here, ne, is that what also in my opinion is um, emerges from, from Hamidu's text is another emphasis and it's another very difficult issue for us to, to translate into the global north that uh, our cities, in our cities, the, 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 the very prominent separation between public and private does not apply. Yeah. So this makes you, you it's very interesting because Damir, uh, Hamidu uh, talked about the production of urban space. Yeah. And if you, uh, um, did, if I sent the same issue for a German sociologist or anthropologist for him to, or her to write a, a, a text on this issue. Now I do, I say that and Nina Bauer is here. I don't know whether she wants to discuss with us, but my impression by, based on my research on uh, urban sociology in Germany um, as of the second world war, I, I would really bet that the, 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 the theme would have been addressed or tackled with the aid of private and public space division. division. Yes? And, and Hamidus Texas totally <laughs> the, ignores this issue completely. And I love this kind of of, because I think this shows the 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 the, the difference. The, the, exactly what the, the, uh, Bianca just said. You go to the favelas. You think, oh, the favelas are isolated. No, they are not. They are and are not. No? They never oh, been. Yeah, <laughs> or, or as as for, uh, Hamido, for example, puts it regarding the the, the these towers and uh, the the ethnography of the of the towers and in. in Buenos Aires, uh, there is this kind of, because we cannot forget, né? and uh, this is something I, that interests me a lot, that even in the so-called gated communities, in this high, uh, high uh, elite uh, uh, buildings and so on, they, we have uh, uh, the, the heritage of, of uh, slavery is as big as, uh, as, as so, so strongly present that you have the maids, you have the the drivers, you have the the gardeners, you you have, and not only this, you have. Uh, th this is the issue I've been working on. Look at at our streets. Our streets are uh, 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 full, and given mainly due to the uh, present uh, economic situation here in Brazil, we have lots of homeless people living there, street vendors, and so on and so on and so on. So there is a structure of of. Uh, 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 space use in the in bodily terms, not urban space use in in as it were private spaces in public spaces, which totally intermingles all of these uh, different distinctions. Mm -hmm. Nina, do you want to <laughs> jump in? I mean, that's less of a methodological issue, but uh, um, 
um, a theoretical issue. I, I would argue more, if you look at, um, at the long durée, the distinction between public and private goes back to Europe, back to the Middle Ages, and actually was ha what has happened in the course of industrialization that the private space got reduced to the core family, which is also by the way, when you talk addressed about maids and so on, this also has to do um, a lot, like at least for Germany, modernization was also getting rid of domestic la labor, exactly because um, there was all the um, respective exploitation reduced, but at the same time, you have the public space. And what I find interesting, because this is sort of, in Europe, it's rarely discussed. If you look at, for example, at, about Jürgen Habermas, about, um, I don't even know the, you know, what is the English word, Strukturwandel der Öffentlichkeit, like showing uh -huh. on a political space how the public space has Habermas. changed. But, but interesting, what I find so um, invigorating about, um, about your work and of all the other Brazilian colleagues working on these issues that we've heard in, in the last two days, is that somehow, um, like the spatial aspect and the material aspect and the political institutional aspect in Europe are always towards, also when we're talking about the household division of labor, it's almost like we were humans because of bodies, but I think that is more um, a theoretical issue because European sociology try to show how they're not natural sciences. So somehow they claim that they, um, like if you're going back to Durkheim, but also German sociologists, that this doesn't have to do anything with physical space or with architecture because that's what the others are doing. So we're looking at the social side. And so it's still linked. So you so you don't really see how they're intermingled and what what you what and um and then sort of what the that it's different in society and how it looks it. So I think we would have, have, to, have to bring that back into um, European theoretical thinking and then, um, which is really inspiring what we have seen that you are, um, there's also suggestion of how to address this and in the second step, uh, step methodologically. So learning about it. As you mentioned, national socialism, I think national socialism just enhanced it because the rest, anything what that was left about spatial thinking was afterwards weeded out of the discipline um, because of the harm work that was that done. So like when I'm talking about Germany and poverty, I feel like it doesn't have to do anything with space, which as you were questioning is nonsense. It has to do a lot with space. So this is sort of, this is something I, not so much methodological, was theoretical, substantial. I would be really, th uh, really think that we should be um, looking more in more detail. Yeah, but, but what I think is interesting in what you're saying, Dina, is that you see we are discussing theory, but based on a kind of methodological sensitiveness, uh, sensitiveness that we we have uh, that, that we are trained to here in Latin America, due to the, 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 the due to our empiricism too. Né? So, and it's it's nice that you are. Uh, this, this is my sorry. It's not like we don't have the empirical data. I mean, I do collect my data somewhere. No, I, I know. Yeah. collect the data. So it's more, I think, um, like you remember when Gabriel said on um, two days ago, he said it's about asking the right questions. If you don't ask about space, you don't see space, and then you don't find it. And it's just like, um, it just, and, and interestingly, because German, at least in Germany, because the interpreted stance is so strong, this is in a way inhibiting asking these questions. Because if you are you taking a construct a constructivist, because you always forget that your data are collected somewhere, and this is sort of not irrelevant where it is. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Uh, I think we are. We need to wrap it up. Uh, I'm sorry, the discussion was so good and, and I, I, I'm sure Ramiro will uh, enjoy getting this video and seeing how much he inspired us in terms mm -hmm. of methods and, and theories and, and ontologies, I would say. Uh, so thank you all. Thank you for being with us. Although our keynote wasn't here, I think <laughs> we tried our best. And I think it worked, Faya. It did. It worked. Bianca, many thanks too. We <laughs> yesterday at ten o'clock in the evening, when we were thinking of having us having a rest, then Anna Anna Maria wrote urgent. Mat Ma Hamido will will not be able to come, and we made it. I'm very happy Thank about you. that. I'm I and I'm also, as you said, Bianca, very happy that we are 
uh, uh, will be able to offer Hamidu this feedback for him to yes. to think <laughs> and further and to further further uh, exchange among us as all. And exactly. he now, of course, will be invited to. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And everybody else. So yeah, thank you, guys. Thanks. So now I know there are these streams uh, here. Simone has already uh, proposed here on this on the chat. Oh, Andre has done it. Okay. And uh, we see each other. Uh, yeah. Uh, very briefly. I don't know. What, I think we stay here. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye, guys. Goodbye. Thank you. It was wonderful. Ciao, ciao, Freya. Ciao, ciao.